uh, Jacob the hill join. A, if this is it, I don't think we have a quorum, so hopefully some oh, okay. more people will come in. <laughs> well, we can do it as an introductory if no one else can make it. I know there's a lot of other meetings happening at the same time at the moment. You have your voting going on and uh, there's another meeting in uh, Heritage Hall as well. So we'll see how it goes. People will be spread thin today. Uh, Yeah, so either Jacob or Lauren should be coming in. So you're thinking it's Jacob today? It'll be Jacob for the first half um, and then Lauren for the second half.
Bill, I like well, the hat. Thanks. <laughs> I wish they had a uh, wish they had a better outcome against the Steelers last uh, this week, but uh, it's still fun. It's fun to see this team actually do something for a while. It's been a while. There we go. I had a tech issue. Uh, Why would my camera work? It's because I had the little privacy lens closed. <laughs> so it looks like we have five members of the committee, so we have a quorum. Yeah, Lauren will be joining us as, as soon as she can. We have the ballot counting happening currently. Um, so that is where she is at. Okay. Hey, Molly. We have Steve, Stephen, Breck, Molly, Krista, Tom, and myself. We have Andrew from the board. We have Jacob from management and Domenico from management. Um, let's get started. Um, did was this meeting properly noticed? Yes. Did, was the agenda published? Yes, it should have been. Uh, we sent it to our communications team. Okay. Um, could I get a copy of it? Uh, yeah, I can put it in the team's chat right now. Give me one second. Well, it's and half. while. Oh, go ahead, Bill. I was going to say, well, while uh, we are waiting for that, uh, if we're opening to owners' comments, don't see any guests. Okay. All right. My beeps and boops are going off here. All right. I'm taking a look in Teams real quick. So, do you do you like Domenico or Dom or which? What do you prefer? Um, to make life easy on everyone, because it, it's always butchered. So I would say Dom is the easiest way to say it. <laughs> okay. All right. If you could throw that agenda into the uh, the chat, that would be great. And you should see it there. Okay. Be nice to me. And come on. Copy. Paste. It's being uh, a little rough on me right now. Come on. Yes. I love when technology cooperates. <laughs> Upload from this device. Yes, please. Thank you. Andrew, good to see you. I didn't think you were going to be making it today. All righty. What did you think I was going to be? I don't know. <laughs> I thought I saw something that said you weren't going to make it. Oh, uh, no, you're good. So. All right, you should see it in your uh chat. Got it. All right, let's see. Here we go. Verifying the link, Microsoft Word, owner comments. All right, do we have enough members seeing the agenda to nominate adopting the agenda? A second. So moved. Oh, go ahead. Okay. All right, got a first and second. Okay, discussion items. All right. Uh, well, Dom, you're up. <laughs> well, hello, everyone. Uh, great to meet all of you. Uh, it's been a, um, how should I say, uh, a great month. I started my first day uh, preparing for the hurricane, helping out with the sandbags for the community. Uh, that was my first day. Um, history about me. I've come from a long history of IT. I worked for British Airways for about almost 30 years uh, in the IT department. I've worked my way up from tech to a service delivery manager. And then from there, COVID hit. Um, we were downsized to just one man. So I was the odd man out from a man, a, a team of 130. We went down to one. Um, yeah, that was COVID for you. Um, decided to move down to Florida, came here and worked for a company called Avant Healthcare Professionals. 
I stayed there for about a year and then worked over to Silver Airways as the director of IT for about almost two years. And here I am now working for your, for, for uh, celebration. Um, the technical history I've had, I've worked for IBM as well, um, as uh, doing, you know, working on technology, building, taking machines apart, printers apart, PCs apart, anything like that. And then going to designing networks, um, designing SharePoint sites, uh, security standards. Uh, so I'm well-versed in ITIL, um, uh, GDPR, uh, SOX compliancy, uh, PCI compliancy, uh, and also uh, because of uh, Silver Airways, I was a very good friend to DHS for quite a while. You got to uh, get to uh, speak to my delegated, uh, how should I say, uh, cybersecurity expert from the government side and worked hand in hand as they start asking questions about how things are done and how they want things done and things like that. And that's me in a nutshell. Any questions? So are you an iPhone or an Android person? Android. <laughs> are you a Windows or a Mac person? Well, I'm both. I have Linux? a Mac and a Windows PC and a Linux PC. <laughs> I have all okay. three. Uh, Linux is my tools device, but uh, my Windows PC is everything, day-to-day -day work. My Mac is my personal Photoshop and stuff like that, because I like the product in that sense. In your preferred Linux distribution? Um, uh, well, I haven't played with it too often, but right now it's Fedora. That's the one I kind of like right now, and I've kind of went from Red Hat to that for a while. And that's where I've been. Trying to, I'm going to look at other new ones as they, as I want to play with new versions coming out now. Since uh, cybersecurity's hit them now as well, people are trying to break <laughs> Linux as well now. It's fun. Never a dull moment in the IT division. That's true. Uh, committee, any any questions for Dom? Tom, I know you've had had the opportunity to have a meeting with Dom. I was out of town when you did that, but uh, does anybody else have any questions, comments? No questions, but welcome. Glad to have you aboard. Thank you. So um, I guess we can go to the next item, item B, first impressions. Um, I'll give you my first impressions, and then you guys can give me whatever you like about my first impressions. Um, as I'm going through all the user accounts, and I'm starting to see uh, quite a few committees that have Gmail accounts in those committees, as well as uh, town hall accounts. Um, in a security standpoint, I don't like it at all. Um, Gmail accounts should not be in our corporation as per se, um, because we handle a lot of PII information. And um, if people don't like using the town hall, town hall account uh, to keep people's documentation safe, um, because it puts the responsibility on me and the management board to make sure that we keep things safe. If it goes through a Gmail account, it, I lose control. I will not know what's happening. So if they get hacked, we all get in trouble. At the end of the day, I get in trouble because I allowed it to go to a Gmail account. I know we have documentation uh, saying that it is allowed. Um, but I would like to bring that back to the board and say that that should not be allowed because if someone's data gets taken, that puts us up for liability for a lawsuit. Now, are you talking about at the committee level or are you talking about on the board level? Because those it's, are two uh, distinctly I, different things. The committee levels, I'm from what I've seen, I have not 
check the board levels yet. I think everybody in the board is using um, the town hall accounts, but anyone using town hall plus using their own personal Gmail accounts to receive emails from um, should should that should have that stopped because we don't you know we have a lot of personal information going through unless it's made public then they shouldn't be receiving any emails like that uh coming directly from us if there's pertaining to violations think, uh, violations especially in the art committee there's people with gmail accounts in them uh that i've seen uh and there's violations and people may not want that kind of stuff being sent through gmail accounts and if something goes wrong with that person's account and gets hacked and their data, that other person's, that other resident's data gets put out to the public and it gets traced to us, then, you know, we, we could be very, very well liable for a lawsuit. Um, I'm doing this for to protect Celebration and myself and <laughs> the management board and everybody going up to the, to the board level. So, if that's a possibility, we would like to have everyone start using their um, town hall accounts only. And if that's a possibility, that'd be appreciated. John, do you know how many are currently using Gmail? Uh, not off the top of my head, but I mean, I can give you a count and send you the list, uh, send you a count of how many people are. Um, don't know what the rules are exactly if you want if I can provide you the Gmail accounts, but I mean well, just the members, committee member. The committee just the member, number, I'll get you the exact number. Uh by tomorrow I'll get you an exact number. Because yeah, I think I think it makes sense. I mean, on the board, everything goes through town hall just for protection for the community, but for committee members, I know there were some issues with usability and things of that nature. But if there is truly a, a security reason for it that uh, we shouldn't steer from it, then I personally think it makes sense and hear what the committee has to say, but I think it makes sense that town hall should be the only ones that are used. I mean, I, I agree with Dom. I mean, <laughs> I haven't had any problems using my uh, my celebration, celebration account, but I guess the follow-up question I have for Dom is that, have you locked down the OneDrive so that it's only accessible through um the um organizational emails because i, I know yes. that there's a lot of one drives that are shared around in links and that that's one security mitigation that you can put in place by making it accessible by only the celebration town hall account yeah i'll double check that but i believe i started locking those down as well um that was one of the first things i started kicking so if people got kicked out of being shared to something that was me <laughs> trying to protect uh, outside party from being able to access. And I did question certain people within our company saying, hey, um, you're sending to this committee member who's using a Gmail account. And they say, yeah, that's valid. So I will, you know, I didn't touch those. But anything I couldn't get confirmation on right away, I just simply kicked them out. And if they're valid, then they will can be sent a relink. But um, obviously, for sure, I will comment that and make sure that we do lock down the uh, one drives. Um, this is Breck. I don't have a problem using my town hall account. However, all of the notifications that I currently get get sent to my hotmail outlook account. So and I tried to have Jose change that, but I don't think he ever figured it out. So if we could get my account switched to just exclusively send everything to the town hall account, that would be great. Um, I'll, send, I'll send you a note, uh, Dominic. Perfect. And if you can send me an example of what notice you received, so I can get, I can backtrace where it's these. Every, uh, it's everything. I think I'm just whenever I guess the distribution list gets tagged, it goes to my Hotmail account instead of the Town Hall account. Got it. Okay, I'll take a look and try to find your your account. But uh, yeah, send me an email. Um, of the, I mean, I'll look for a Hotmail. I'll definitely find that that might be you. <laughs> I haven't seen many Hotmail nope. accounts. Um, okay. Um, one, one other thing you might want to do too is just putting a um, 
putting a rule in place that doesn't allow people to do uh, like putting rules that auto forward information as well. Um, I know that like in my organization, that's one thing that we uh, we make sure that um, emails can't be forwarded um, through automatic rules. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, matter of fact, that yeah, that would tell my list to check as well. Um, yeah, um, I've made quite like, a lot of changes. <laughs> it looks like the technology dot committee uh, email that has Brex Hotmail, not the town hall. So maybe just switching okay. that that resolves it. Okay, I'll take care of that for you. I didn't want to start switching people's things without letting them know first. Um, in that sense of uh, notifications. And especially my tech committee <laughs> want people to miss out. Um, but yes, I will um, get that rule. I'll double check that rule because that's one of the rules I did enable in a lot of a lot of my positions when I joined them. Uh, make sure that there's no forwarding, no no auto forwarding allowed. So far, I've looked. I haven't seen any. Um, I've done I've done audit logs, and I have not seen anything happen within the last thirty days. So that's a good thing. So no one's auto following. Um, but I think that's because they have access to get emails to their Gmail accounts or Hotmail accounts. So um, we'll definitely check that as well. Um, so some of the things that um, I do want to talk about, like, for instance, our emails, I'm not quite sure. We do not have a privacy notice when we send out emails. Is this something that we are worried about or concerned about or any, or should we just not have a privacy disclaimer at the bottom of our emails? I mean, it's a standard thing, but I wanted to bring bring that by you guys and see what you think. Yeah, it, it's about as useful as toilet paper. I mean, <laughs> if you if you send if you send the email to the wrong person, there's no way to recall it. There's no way to do anything with it unless it's inside an exchange type system or on Office 365. But uh, I'm personally, I don't use signatures. I don't use privacy notices. I try to send as little email as humanly possible. But I'm not normal. <laughs> hey, that's old school. I like that more than anything else. <laughs> I'm a techie guy, but I'm very old school. <laughs> well, I, get I like four to talk to people. Hundred emails a day, but uh, <sighs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, what are the thoughts of the uh, other members, John? You you probably have a thought. <clears throat> I have some of my customers do it. Some don't. Um, we don't use it internally at, at Apple. Um, you know, it's just it's just like the email forwarding thing. I work with a lot of federal agencies, and you know, you can tell them to do best practices and use your agency email, but a lot of them will still send emails to each other with Gmail and stuff, but that's intentional. But, you know, you're, you have to have a big stick. Um, mm -hmm. Hopefully people will just do the right thing when they're instructed to do it. You don't have to have a stick, but, you know. Uh, Krista, do you have any thoughts? I mean, I don't know if it's too loud, but I'm so wholly supportive. Um, at least of people using their town hall accounts. I mean, even it looks like most of our members here joined through their town hall accounts. Um, but I'm also very much a compartmentalization person. So I like things segmented where I don't like my things mixing. So that's that's um, more my thoughts on it. Okay. What about the privacy notice or signature on the bottom of an email? I could go either way. I don't have. Um, I think the main thing we do with my, with where I work is we get a notification if it's from outside our organization um, is more of it. Um, my biggest concern with probably forcing people to use their town hall accounts is we do have quite a lot of different tech literacy um, levels within our committee members. So some of them, like, I mean, even previous board members who or that didn't know how to check their own email or didn't have their own email. So um, that's, I think that'll be your biggest hurdle is is dealing with the, I, I don't think it'll be an issue on this committee, um, but as you get into some of those other committees, I that's where I think you'll you'll have some struggles. So the better you can do with training or, or at least it might be some one-on-one -on -one, uh, 
personal touch from your side to help that through if that's the way we go yeah and that's fine thank you uh Krista. i mean that's great great advice i'll make sure i do that um that's what i normally do uh in my previous jobs uh one on one touch um and give them and try to i'm gonna try to make it as easy as possible for them to understand um if i can get my mom uh to use an ipad and check her emails and she's 80 years old and she does not know anything about technology but she knows how to use her apple computer now and check her emails when her son sends it and play um uh, solitaire on it she's happy so I, if i can do that i can help out our uh, our residents uh brett yeah. do you have any thoughts uh, no, I don't. I'm, I agree with Krista and, and Dominic what he just said. Um, I just was going to joke. I said, if you could help me out with my mother in law, that would be great. <laughs> yeah, we all, we all have mother in laws that we do tech support for. That's for sure. Oh, yes. That was the one thing I hated about my getting married. My fa my wife's side does not know anything about technology. I was helped that support for for the whole family. It was Two jobs, getting home from work and then going home to help everybody else with their problems. Yeah, right. <laughs> but I, I, but I, it, it is a best practice. I agree, and I think we should all try to get everybody to use those email addresses. Uh, I just don't know because Dominic, you brought up liability. How much liability is there if two people are iMessaging that it's not archived and it's board business that officially falls under the Sunshine Law? So, but I have so many agencies here in Florida that follow it to the T, and half of them don't. And I mean, the city of Orlando got caught once. They had to pay a fine. But, you know, again, I agree for a best practice. I just don't know um, how far down that rabbit hole you want to go is looking about the liability because people still will iMessage each other and use different emails, if even by accident, you know, a lot of times. Yeah, uh, and, and that's fine. I mean, for us, the way I'm looking at it, as long as we, because we are considered the entity, as long as we as the entity followed our best practices and our rules and we made sure that all our information was sent legitimately to all proper corporate accounts, if they forward it and they make a copy of it, a screenshot, and they forward it through their Gmail account, that's on them. That committee member ends up getting in trouble, not us. We followed everything to the letter of the law or process as you if you want to put it that way but that's as long as we do that and we're covered on our end what they do is on them yeah i just want to protect us and all the other you know all members as best as possible molly your thoughts thumbs up on the town hall emails i'm neutral on the privacy policy but it doesn't it doesn't hurt so sure right steven um, as far as I've already thinking of giving my thoughts on the email, but uh, as far as the privacy is concerned, um, you know, I, I kind of agree with John from the perspective that um, it depends. I, I would not, uh, I, I don't care either way, but I'm pretty sure the legal team might have a different opinion. So, I mean, my, my suggestion would be that you check with the legal team to see if they feel comfortable with the risk and the exposure that it potentially has having it on there or not having it on there. That's uh Again, that's a lawyer's call. That's not a uh, tech committee uh, member's call. I think as long as the the directors are probably more in compliance, it's more that's more important than the committee members themselves. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, unless you're prepared to go sue somebody for something sent erroneously, it's just a paper tiger. Yeah, very true. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Um. Okay. Any any other first thoughts, Dom? Um, yeah, I mean, I love the systems you guys are using. Uh, Tom uh, showed me uh, Gallagher and the camera system. They're great, but for the size of what we are and how many people can actually manage these things, I would need to hire someone to manage Gallagher by itself. It's such a complicated system. It's great. Don't get me wrong. I love it. I've worked with complicated, but even the guys who are maintaining it say it's so hard and it's so many pieces to it. Every little thing you need to do is configurable. But if you configure one end correctly, but then get towards the middle or the end, you change something and now the whole thing doesn't work right. 
And I had gotten some training and I thought I configured the doors correctly um, for Lakeside. And it worked. It did what it was supposed to do, but then it knocked out everything else. Even though I only talked to two doors. I say, I want this door and this door to open from this time to this time. And it opened all the doors. And I'm like, wait, I only picked two objects. You know, Jones room doors front, Jones room doors rear. And it locked the bathroom doors, it locked the pool doors. And I just have no idea what, what caused it. And it's because one of the settings that I that I've changed actually changed for everything except uh, instead of just the two objects I spoke to or tried to configure. So it's a great system. There are no templates. Uh, same thing with the camera system is very great. Um, I have no issues with it. No templates, nothing for someone with a, you know, an IT size of one person at the moment, right? You would need someone who can specialize themselves in both systems. Um, I'll get it. Th I'll get through all that. But I think if we ever down the line decide to go through uh, uh, an upgrade or swapping out systems in any way when we're trying to replace them, um, we try to find something that is a bit user friendly, especially uh, keeping in mind that how many people are working in the IT department. It's just a small amount of people. And if um, Management needs to take a look at certain things. They need to. We need to be able to give them something that they can look at and understand easily. We don't have any developers that can create a GUI that can talk to these things using an API. Um, if there's board members or committee members who are able to do that, and if they're allowed to do that, uh, I, I would probably go for that <laughs> in that essence. But I wouldn't want to ask a committee member to spend their personal time to create a GUI or something that will help us better use the tool that we have. Um, not, not to it, volunteer it myself, but I do have those capabilities. So. <laughs> Thank you. For <laughs> hey, this is Jacob. I'm sorry to interrupt. I'm going to have to hop off the call to start the MPAG um, meeting. Lauren will be joining this as soon as possible. Uh, I know we got a lot more votes for the ballot counting than was expected in, in person. Um, so she'll be joining as well. And I'll follow up uh, with Dom after this meeting. Thank you all for all your work. I appreciate you guys. Thanks, Jacob. Uh, Krista, you've got three minutes left. Uh, anything you want to cover before you leave? Yeah, I was all just right. actually okay. adding um, that to the chat. Um, I've just got a standing second Wednesday obligation. So um, when with the rescheduled time, so sorry. But um, with the committee comments, I think it'd be really nice for us to do, maybe we set up one of our lunches again. Um, it'd be a nice opportunity to, to kind of do more intros with, with Dom and, and then he can kind of hear more about our background and, and what we do and what we each bring to the committee. So um, if, that's, if that's a possibility, um, I'd totally be game for that. And that's all yeah, so am I. That's awesome. Sounds good. Thanks, Krista. Have a good one. Sorry. Uh, yeah, you too. Bye. Bye, -bye. Uh, Dom. Any more first impressions? Um. Yeah. Um, first impressions. Uh. Yeah. I mean, the 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 Gallagher system has a lot of great opportunities to create uh, income. I was speaking to the um, ProTech. Guys, they say a lot of HOAs use the digital card system, uh, half of this, to pr uh, to provide an income uh, because you buy the licensing once. It's a lifetime license. So as residents leave, um, we can recharge the new resident coming in and we make a good profit off of each license because the license stays with us as long as we keep the system. So if we have a thousand um, digital cards and five people leave, you know, the first time we only make, say, for instance, if we charge 20 bucks for a $5 license, we make 15 bucks. Next time around, we're going to make 20 bucks profit um, because we don't have to pay for the license again. So um, I was thinking of bringing that up to the to you guys to see if we can bring it to the board for making money because it's easier. Um, Tom uh, showed me how much he loved it. <laughs> when uh, he, he he showed me his card was working fine when mine wasn't. We were trying to get into the computer room <laughs> at Lakeside and yeah. I couldn't get in. 
Yeah, I think that is a very large topic that we do need to cover at some point. Um, the digital, the digital cards. There, there's a, there's a request that was put before Lauren, uh, what Tom, two meetings ago, that if uh, we didn't have certain things in place, we were going to release digital access cards to the community as a as a feature. So that that's part of a bigger conversation. Okay, that we need to talk through. Um, okay. When we were uh, when we had the initial conversations with Gallagher over this, the, the cost, Dominic, what you talked about, we we discussed quite quite deeply. Um, we were not looking really to, to charge residents to make money off it. And some do over in Siena, they do. They went to digital, but <clears throat> I guess that's a board decision, Andrew. Obviously. Yeah, and it's uh, you know it, it's a it's a thought, and um, obviously, we do charge today. For the regular cards, regular cards. Um, so it's just a different revenue, different way of making revenue, uh, and it's a permanent revenue because we don't have to buy new cards. Uh, the other aspect is as well is the cards that we're using today are not secure. I'm not sure if you knew that or if you've spoken with the Gallagher team that the cards that we're having today are non-encrypted uh, cards. So you can take that card, go to Home Depot, get a card uh, reader, read your card, and make a copy of it. Yeah, I'm aware. Uh, I think we knew that. Okay. So, I mean, we can just simply buy the new cards and start replacing them as we go along. We buy the encrypted cards. So we'll just uh, phase out the older cards as we go along, and we'll just have people come in and just say, hey, and the other thing I want to do because of security, we should either start swapping out these cards, maybe say every two years, every three years, so that we can validate these people are still here if we're not doing audits in different ways. I think one of the ways of auditing these cards is by forcing the cards to run out and time out at a spe specific time and they get a brand new card after two years. I mean... When I worked in the so World the Trade Center, residents, I got a new the residents would, the residents would have to pay every two years for cards? No, just the one time, I think. I mean, this is – I'm not going to come up with a pricing process. I'm just coming up with an, uh, uh, an idea because right now we're giving them um, IDs and then we're putting a sticker on it that they got it renewed or it went up to, you know, that, that it's been recertified after. I'm not sure what the process is exactly yet uh, from uh, that we do today, but I do know that um, they don't get replaced. They just simply get a sticker on it. So how do we validate that the person is still living here uh, other than, you know, our records and paperwork and stuff like that? These IDs don't go away. They just still work. So if the if well, uh, homeowner... Yeah. There is a process and okay. there, there are steps. So, um, but I don't want to talk about it openly in a public forum. Um, yeah. But yeah, that uh, that's that's another interesting one. Okay. What else, what else well, do you have? I well, Go ahead. I just quickly respond to the um, about the cards having like you know not being encrypted. You don't have to have encrypted cards to be able to secure it. So, have you guys thought about just putting hashing it? So that it's linked to a um, all those that hash is linked to a data table that you can look up a user based off of a hash. Well, the that's, always, the that's, scenes always an, the... that's an that's always an alternative versus having to have like a hard a hard encrypted uh, you know card. Well, the reality is there's a card number that goes and checks against the live database. So if that card number is expired because of their date expiration, they're not going to get in the building. I mean, other than CROA events, like the last one we had on Friday, where people showed a card, there's really no security, quote unquote, issue, because the system itself will time out that, that user after a set time and date. Okay. Oh, no, I was, I was responding to Dom's uh, comment that's saying that someone can go and take a card reader and read the card. And I didn't know oh, yeah. if that meant if that meant that that card reader says like okay this person's name is Stephen he lives at you know one hundred five one one thousand five watts no. you know et cetera. The, the, so the the system doesn't 
doesn't record PII in the card. It's just a number. No. I mean, I've got a, I've got a flipper zero. I can clone a card and retransmit it back. Cloning, it's not a big deal. Uh, it's just the system is the defense. And so when you swipe that card, it's got to authenticate against the system across all of celebration. So. Gotcha. Um, that's it on the uh, first impressions. I mean, uh, other than non-technical, I love this town. Very, very non-copy and paste. <laughs> that was the one biggest complaint my wife had. It's like this Florida is nothing but copy and paste. And I'm like, babe, that's the way it is. <laughs> Make a house and let's move in. <laughs> well, I was going to ask Dom, do you live in Celebration or do where whereabouts do you live? Uh, I live on the opposite side of Celebration. I live in uh, Windermere, just oh. uh, outside of the Magic Kingdom castle. So I can see the lights coming out of the castle and I can see the fireworks every night. <laughs> As if it was in my living room. <laughs> because it is. Yes, pretty much. Yes. Yeah. Um, right. I do have some other ideas, um, stuff like that, but I'm not sure if you want to do this here. Do you want to speak about it another time or send you an email about money making ideas? Um, we probably want to hold that from the public forum just because um, got some thoughts on that. Um, Andrew, what are your thoughts? Yeah, why don't you share that through teams with the committee just to have some conversation because it may be something that the committee already went down that path and has more intel or maybe it's something that wasn't thought of, but there's an alternative. So I think that's okay. good for the committee to have conversation first. And then, yeah, if we want to put it on a future agenda item, then we can okay. speak uh, publicly about it. You got it. Perfect. Um, just to bring up, uh, we ran around the neighborhood, uh, took a look at that, the EV stations, and we got them all working up and running again, apart from the two nice. big, big monsters. We got one monster turned back on, and we're trying to get them to re-register the unit. The second one, which is if you're walking towards the lakeside, it's on the opposite side. That's still per turned off. We try to get it to run, but we realized that the computer system there is not functioning. So we turned it off again. This is useless because we can't do anything. So uh, the other option, the other thing is we're still trying to figure out how to get that fixed. Uh, BTC Power is the only people that will fix it because uh, there's no more warranty. I'm not sure what the costing is, but I do have solutions for replacing it. Very, very cheaply. So we can discuss that at a later date um, as part of my money making decisions, uh, ideas. Um, let's see. Uh, that's it on my end. Okay. I guess does first first impressions go both ways? <laughs> Floor is open. Anybody want to make a comment? Well, first of all, Dom, I have my World Trade Center badge ID in my desk here. I can show you when we meet. So I was in World Trade Center. I have mine as well. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think you'll find two two different sets of people in town. Uh, uh, I'm one who tries not to raise costs on residents and actually stand up in board meetings and complain because there's way too many non-celebration residents that come in and use our facilities and we all have to pay for it. So um, but I mean, I understand revenue is revenue, so I, I think people have different feelings on that. Okay. This is uh, well, a couple of things that I'm looking at are what we're currently already doing today, but it's inefficiently being yeah. done today. That's all. Yeah. Now, I will say, I would say with Jose and Lauren for what three years now, Tom, three and a half years. I don't think that's ever came up on our teams about revenue generation. It was more about us getting budget rather than generating revenue, which we got I know. I'm, I, listen, IT is an expense department. It's not a money-making department. Well, I'm my, my old boss at uh, Silver made me come up with ways to make money. <laughs> so 
streamlining things. If it saves us money, it's making money. And I agree with that. So as far as Gallagher, I, I lost my access and Lauren was out. Um, so I need to get my, my, my badge redone on my phone. But uh, a lot of the residents that we talked to, that I talked to this last year, are still extremely excited about getting a digital ID. So I know it's something that I got up in the board and, and talked about and got a lot of people excited about it. So I think we're all frustrated how long it's been taking to get out to the public. Yeah, there are still some glitches that they're working on. Um, I know they just finished Lakeside, um, but I'm still having issues at uh, Heritage Park. And Tom, you're saying you're, you're I know you're still having issues at um, Artisan Park. Uh, we'll uh, have to sit with them and try to get this uh, resolved. Well, so when we get to the Gallagher topic, um, I have a few items to to discuss uh, where I see that we are in terms of Gallagher implementation. Um, but I saw it was on the agenda I, uh, further down. So when we get there, yeah. we'll, we'll, we can talk about those things. OK. Uh, any more first impressions before we move on to mycelebration.fl? OK. Uh, mycelebration.fl. Uh, any uh, updates, Andrew? Yeah, no major updates. We had the meeting yesterday. Uh, we'll get Dom on that monthly schedule moving forward. Uh, update on the general maintenance of how everything gets. That's kind of the catch off everything. It sounds like their solution is going to be to create almost like a subcategory for CROA and CCD under that. So then it'll get routed to the appropriate entity to resolve. So. I think that's still a work in progress, but um, outside of that, the only other issue they were mentioning was um, just, I guess, some of the issues with Duke Energy lately with the power outage and lights blowing and things of that nature. If Crow was seeing anything similar to that on our side of maintenance that was related to any of those surges or electrical outages, because it seemed like they upgraded or changed the system a little bit and uh, CCDD was dealing with some of those issues, but hopefully that has been resolved and is better moving forward. But just a potential risk item out there uh, with the we uh, with the electricity. So I have to say I had a, an issue in the back. I, I filed it with the app. It, they were out a week later. It worked seamlessly in a neighbor down the street here. I don't know if you guys saw that tree that fell in that Mustang, that 1967 Mustang. Um, they filed the ticket too, and people were happy here. So it seems like it's at least from my perspective, from residents here in North Village, working as intended. And then last comment I'll make is, uh, Dom, I don't know if Lauren and Jose had passed the reports that he was sending to me, but that's just something that I think would be beneficial to send to myself and and the committee on a monthly basis. Which reports? Uh, pretty much like what's still open for the month, what's been closed and resolved, and you know how long different things took. So, specific data okay. points from that GoGov report that they should already be created with templates. They just need to be run. Okay. Dom, I can show you where that is. Okay. Thank you. Hey, Lauren. Glad you're here. Sorry, I'm also doing ballot counting. <laughs> How's it going? There's a lot of ballots here. <laughs> Looks like over 400. Wow. I voted electronically today, so. We appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> OK, anything else on my uh, celebration FL? Okay, on to Gallagher. Mr. Hall, do you have any thoughts? Uh, last week, I sent an email out with some basic observations that I had about Gallagher. I didn't see anybody respond or even know if anybody even read it. Uh, I read it. <laughs> do, do you have any feedback? Uh, before I go into the four points that I want to discuss it, what was your... Uh, observations 
Um, so, uh, I mean, Tom, I think we, 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 I forgot we talked about the drawers. That you, I, I appreciate that you're very detailed with little things like that, like drop down menus and way things are written. I'm, I'm not. Um, I, you know, I think they're valid depending on the eye that you're looking at it. I'd have to go back and read it again, but I looked at it. But the, those didn't pop out to me, but I, I definitely know that those were there. And I think it's, you know, it's very subjective. Okay. Um, most of those came from uh, the fact that I gave Bill uh, access on his phone, Bill uh, McFadden. And within a matter of a few days, he had two or three times that he had problems. Um, and so that, that concerned me that if Bill is having trouble that we release this app, which I'm all in favor of releasing, but that the residents are going to run into these same kind of problems. And for example, as simple as a statement that says, you got to have Bluetooth on. I mean, that was one of his issues. Uh, nowhere in the help menu did I find a statement that said you had to have Bluetooth on. So, um, you know, or you can't have your earbuds in and have Bluetooth go into your earbuds and then use the use the uh, the phone to open the door. So we need we need to make some general statements like that so that uh, people don't get the app and then run into the same thing. And uh, of course, we have a few. Well, well, I won't go into this. Yeah. There, there were some people that will complain. So, so um, our, my take on the whole Gallagher situation is I, I, I completely agree with what Dom has already said about this is a really complicated, um, this is a complicated system. Um, yeah, I, I, and you would think that anyone uh, would say, how hard could it be to uh, have a card key and open up a door? Uh, well, to that person, I say, well, we'll sit you in front of the computer and uh, you can explain it to us. It's very, very complicated, very complicated. And, and counterintuitive. Totally not intuitive at all. Um, so there's basically two levels of uh, users, if you will. There's the, the basic user, which can authorize a card key, can, can change the date, can give you access privileges to a door all the things that we associate with a card key access system. But then there's there's another level under that, far more, far more complicated about what the schedules are for the doors, when is the door open at all times, uh, how about the provision to open a door for a certain amount of time so that if we had an event, we want to open a door for three hours. That requires uh, a level of knowledge that's not at all intuitive. Um, that you can just look at it and say, well, this is what we have to do. Uh, it's a very sophisticated system targeted at uh, industrial uh, enterprise entities, big, big buildings, hospitals and places, and it has a lot of flexibility. It can open gates for garages. Uh, it can interface with our um, security camera system and trigger images and it very complicated. So bottom line is we need some training. Um, my recommendation uh, is that we ask Lauren to authorize at least two levels, uh, two uh, people to have the highest level training. That means that they understand the sub menus. This will be an all day training, by the way. This is not something you're going to sit uh, down and, uh, and absorb in uh, just a couple hours. This will be an all day training event. Um, and this would be if you want to call it sys admin level training for Gallagher. And this will allow you to configure the hardware, to configure the schedules, uh, all of the details that are on the, the, the lowest level of the operation of the system. And then above that, we need authorization for training as a user so that the people uh, at the front desk can authorize a card, can can provide access privileges to sp specific doors. And that would be a broader set of people, maybe you know half a dozen people would go to that training, maybe just two or three, I don't know, but certainly the people that are next to the Jones room would need to go to that training so that they, they at least had a basic understanding of how to authorize uh, a card or extend the date for the expiration on the card. Yeah, you um, on that front desk staff. Yes. So everywhere, need, yeah. So that'd be we we need we need to get that uh from management. We need management to authorize these individuals. Of course, 
Bill McFadden, uh, we would suggest be one of them and Dom would be one for the assist admin level uh, training. Um, so enough said on that. I don't know what how we we have to turn this into action, by the way, when we're all done to make sure that this is just a talk that this actually happens. Um, we still have a fundamental issue with the entire system, even at town hall, um, where town hall, by the way, is the room at uh, by the Jones room. Uh, initially, this was imagined that there would be a server and then there would be these clients and the clients would have access to the server. Uh, and we bought licenses to do that. And Lauren can correct me, but I believe there's three, three licenses for, for client license, if you will. Um, the, it's not just a matter of loading some software, so a client software on a computer, and you're up and running. It, it, it's more, way more complicated than that. Certain folders have to be mapped. That you have to map uh, folders to your client computer from the server in order for this to work. Uh, we didn't write the software, and we can take issue about whether the software is, is written correctly or not, but we didn't write it. Uh, the bottom line is that the way it is now, no one, Arson Park, Town Hall, no one is using the client software that we've paid for. What in fact they're doing is they're remote, using a remote desktop session, and they're remoting into the server, and then they're doing whatever they need to do on the Gallagher system, and that works. The problem here is that uh, that that server is using Windows uh, two, uh, Server 2019, and there's only two. It only allows for two remote desktop sessions. So uh, if Bill wants to log in and and Dom is already on and Town Hall is already on, we have to bounce somebody, or we don't take care of the of the resident who's standing right in front of us. Um, so. Simple solution to this is we just buy more licenses to to allow remote login, and then we can uh, turn it over to you, Dom, or to Lauren to go back and say, hey, we want a refund on our uh, on our our client licenses uh, because we don't really need them, and just continue to use. We haven't seen any problem with the rem with remoting in, and we do this every single day. We do this every day, so we know it works. So it turns out that. What we need is, um, I, they call them Cal license. I'll be honest, I don't even know what that is, but to fi a five user Cal license is $429, $429, 400, basically 430 bucks, ad tax, $450. And yeah, we'll need the remote. It's called uh, remote. Uh, we have to upgrade our server to a remote control server, which will allow remote connections. Um, I have to double check that. Because we have infinite, we have an enterprise license, so we don't need uh, cows in this in that sense because we have infinite amount of users um, that can connect. Uh, well, that can sign into our domain uh, to remote control connect to to the server. We only have two user license, which yeah. Microsoft provides you for free. Right. So to get the remote server license, I have to double check what that costing is, and if we can do it on the virtual end. Um, maybe not as expensive as, uh, as I'm thinking, like two grand, but um, because we're going to have to upgrade the server, we're going to have to replace the server because the server is not designed. The server we're using right now, the 2019 one, um, we would, I can play with it and change the the, the remote server licensing temporarily for six months till Microsoft catches on um, with their light, their clock time that they have on there. Uh, and then they turn you back to two licenses. So you pretty much can get it for about six months. So we can play with that until we can either get the clients, because I don't know uh, what it is in our contract uh, yet for Gallagher, if we can get the refund for those clients. Um, but if we can't, we're going to, um, redesigning the network so that we don't have to worry about doing, uh, crazy remote control access between our, our buildings. Um, you can just simply connect to what you need to, uh, doesn't matter what building you're in. So like, for instance, you, uh, Tom Hall out, uh, in, um, Artisan Park, 
we will talk to brand, um, sorry, uh, to real manage, talk to them and create a connection between the two, our two entities and allow them access to the Gallagher system directly so that you can use your client without having to deal with remote controlling in. And that's if we don't get the, you know, the costing back for the, for the, for the clients. Um, but I'll try to do whatever we can. We already pay for them. I will get the, that network solution up and running within the next two to three months. Okay. Um, so, Dom, just to be clear, you're saying that the five the five licenses won't work, that we can't go that route? Um, no, uh, not cows. They're just, I don't think they're called cows because they're it's remote control we're looking for, not user licensing, because that's... Right. We're uh, looking for RDS. That's what yes. we're looking for. Yeah, yeah so we'll need to do that. From, from just reading from the Microsoft website, that we need these five licenses to have more than two RDS clients. We could go up to five, and we're talking about four hundred and thirty bucks. Okay, I mean, I'll so, double check all that. Um, to be honest, if you can understand Microsoft licensing, uh, all to you, because they have hired people <laughs> that uh, just okay. deal with Microsoft licensing. <laughs> all right. So it, all I'm saying is that this issue has to be resolved. Yeah. Uh, how, however, we resolve it, whether we figure out how to make the clients work, whether or not we. Uh, you know, if it were up to Bill, Bill would establish a, a tunnel, a permanent tunnel uh, to Town Hall. By the way, just for those that are listening, uh, that we these that all of this is via VPN, so this is all secure communications. We're not just yes. uh, logging into the remote server. So it, we're VPNing in, and uh, there's credentials involved in all. That. So uh, I, my my point is, it has to be fixed. Every day we bounce somebody like you off of. Uh, and we did it today. Uh, it, when you got a resident standing in front of you and he's saying, he's got his card and he says, I want this updated, uh, we have to do something. And so we take yeah. a look at who's been who's been idle the longest and we knock them, knock them off. That's not the way we should be operating, in, in my opinion. Okay, yeah. uh, next item. Um, we, uh, I, I recommend that we get ProTech in here uh, with Gallagher. Um, to go through, if you want to call a punch list, this was actually Lauren's idea, but we now have to make it happen. Um, largely, everything is done. Uh, the installs are all finished, at least for us. I can't, when we were at Town Hall, it looked all it looked fine. Uh, so, that from a hardware perspective, I think we're in pretty good pretty good shape, and we're ready to go, and we can put this project to bed. Uh, but what we do need need is to sit. Uh, Gallagher down and Protec and have them explain a few things to us. For example, these items that we've talked about uh, on the remote, uh, on the app, the card key app. Um, we, if you haven't looked at the card key app yourself, well, please do and see if you're okay with the user interface. Um, you know, the actions button, if you just open up all the potential windows and see, because you got to assume that any resident who gets this app is going to do that and, and that they you, we don't want them to get themselves in trouble or get us in trouble uh, yeah so and i highlighted it in my email what areas that i thought uh we don't need to see for example we don't need to see a countdown timer uh of the uh the security code you know, why, why, what are they going to do with that information? So things like that, we should get a meeting. Now, I, I, maybe you guys have had better luck than I have. Uh, maybe Lawrence had better luck, but ProTech has been very, very difficult to get in front of you. They were easy to get there when we went through the sales process. But now trying to get them to come and do anything and get uh, Scott Hunt to show up has been very, very hard. We had a lot of false starts, a lot of missed appointments. and. So we need to get Scott Hunt in the room. We will very quickly saturate uh, his ability, his knowledge. Uh, he won't be able to handle it. Uh, and so he's going to have to have Gallagher back him up when we start asking some questions about how this works. So Lauren, uh, I don't know if you're still listening, but uh, we need to get a, a punch list meeting with Scott. Well, do we need to come uh, over? Sorry, Lauren. 
Oh, yeah. Um, I We will get Scott out here for a punch list meeting. I know Dom has already talked to him about that and uh, about the training as well. So we're just waiting for the formal number for what the training would cost. And we had already talked about kind of a super user training versus a day to day user training. Um, so as soon as we get that information, we'll I'll authorize it and we'll get that moving. OK, great. Yeah. With that training uh, and the tech support that comes with Gallagher, they'll give us um, computer based training. So they will always have something to train on. If uh, we need a refresher on something, we will have that and we'll have their help desk support. So if we do have a question, we can call them and they'll walk us through how to fix it or change something uh, if we need to change and we don't understand their training or documentation. Well, as you already pointed out, which I 100% agree, even ProTech doesn't under understand this. When they initially configured the artisan doors, they were incorrect. And we had people standing outside for an hour every morning for a couple of weeks. Uh, and they thought it was okay. It wasn't until we got the engineering at Gallagher that we could actually sort through and get that fixed. Because uh, certainly we we try to, and, and I, you know, I'm an old guy, so I'm a hard guy. I, I probably can't learn anything, but like Bill is not old. Uh, and he couldn't learn it either. So uh, it, it's complicated. That's all I can say. Uh, so last thing I, I would ask is to to figure out, and this is outside the realm of technology, So, I, but I, we know for sure the question is going to come up as to what is the cost of the license. So if we go to the bill goes to the board and recommends to the board that we release this app to the community, the question certainly is going to come around to it, what cost? Well, how much will this cost? So we need to have cost breakdown for licenses. Uh, you know, maybe five thousand. I think Andrew mentioned five thousand and ten thousand, one thousand five and ten thousand, say quantity, because there, there's going to be price tiers based on quantities. Yeah. The price comes down. Now, last time that we talked with Scott about this, what he said was a little bit different than what I heard you say a little bit earlier, and that is that the license goes with the phone. And that and uh, John, may, maybe you can help me here. But if you get rid of your phone and you got a new phone, you need a new license. The right. That's why I lost mine. Yeah. Right. So no, you shouldn't need your license, uh, new license. You would just get it um, transferred to the new phone. OK, well, that's I, I understand you. I We heard what you said, but I'm saying okay. that, this, that 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 contradicts what Scott said. So we need, uh, to, get okay. to, the, we need to get to the bottom of that discussion. Uh, it, what is the license cost and is it transferable? Those are the kind of things that we would need to discuss in such a meeting uh, before we close the project and we say this done, this thing is done. So that, that was four points. Uh, and I think my, my suggestion, and I'm hoping the committee agrees, that we need to resolve these four issues before we declare this project done for the year. Uh, remote access has to be fixed or we have to get the clients working. It's not working right now. We have to have training for you, uh, super admin and users as Lauren described. That's number two. We need to have a punch list meeting with uh, Protech slash Gallagher to go through the items that we have questions about and to see whether or not we need to clean up the interface, the customer interface to the, I mean, the, to the users for on the on the mobile app, on the mobile app and the licensing cost for the mobile app. Those are the four things that I think we need to have resolved. And then we say this project is done. And we and we like to do that. The year is ending, right? We'd like to get this project done this year, meaning like next month, this should be finished. We declare this as a finished project. So Tom, let me, I went back and just pulled up your email real quick. So about and we went through this with the my celebration app right about ui yeah um, your first point about bluetooth i can tell you because i do this for a living there are many services on an iphone or an ipad that if you disable bluetooth or wi-fi or services are not going to work yeah um, you know and, and again we don't really advertise that to a lot of people it's just it's inherent it happens you put your phone in airplane mode stuff's just not going to work uh, we can easily handle that with training. I don't know if yeah. this is something that you want to pop yeah. up and say Bluetooth might be on. Um, some of the things that you want to hide in settings, I don't think any of this will do any damage, verbose logging and some of those things in there. Um, you know, my dad's 80 something, he's got his iPhone and he loves turning stuff off. So I'm always going there 
fixing his phone because he loves turning stuff off. Um, but I think training can help with that. Um, but again, if, if we want to push to hide some of the settings things, I don't know, you know, how open they will be to that because we tried that with my, you know, with my celebration app with the GoGov guys. Yeah, just for clarity, John. I uh, that list of, that I gave, th those are really observations. They're not criticisms or suggestions for change. Those are things that I observed that I think we as a group should say, hey, this is okay. Uh, we don't care that a person's getting a countdown of the authenticator code. Uh, it, it's fine. And we just say, yeah, we're going to ignore it. Uh, we don't ask for a change. I'm, I'm not suggesting that. These, okay. are not these are not gripes. They're just observations. Okay. So, and that, but, but I, but I really would like, you know, as this committee, and I'm not the chairman of the committee or anything, but I, I would like this committee to have accomplished something this year. And we've got a couple of things that we're just about ready to get across the finish line. And this is one of them. And it's so close, right? So let's wrap this thing up and get it done. Uh, and the other thing is, of course, the remote camera, which is up and running in the in the stick room as we speak. Uh, and we like to close that project and say, you know what? It's done. It's finished. Now we can put it in the shelf. You can throw it out and do whatever you want, but we completed it and it works. Yep, we've tested that and that's, uh, it's cl clocking out tonight or tomorrow morning actually, when uh, once everything is done and, and, uh, and accounted for at the, at the ballot counts. So we're in the November meeting here. Right. So when is the year? Uh, is there a December meeting, um, Andrew? Yeah, I would expect that we'd have a. I mean, when's December the year end meeting? When's the CROA year end? When do we when do we end? Well, the year end is usually in, I think, February, because that's when the okay. transition is. But as far as annual fiscal year end or end of year, it would be December. Okay, so I don't know when our this this particular esteemed group started, but whenever we're ending, I would like to have to say that th these projects are done. Yeah, yeah, this would be through February with the current group. Okay, I well, second point. I know earlier in the year there was talk of O and R, which I know that's far from ever being completed. So I think it would be nice if we are able to get Gallagher out to the public before the end of the year, I think that would be a nice perk. Uh, Echoing Johns, I, I don't know, have you, got, have you been using it? Have you guys been using the app? I did up until about a month or two months ago and I lost access when, it, when I got my iPhone 16, I lost it. So September, end of September, I lost it. Well, certainly it wouldn't be very hard to <laughs> restore you. Uh, I, I well, think Lauren I, I did. Think he they, might have access now. Yeah. Uh, Lauren uh, did send me an email, but it, it timed out when I finally clicked on it. It said it was too late to to I, use. I it. think Bill just told you that you, if you check, you'll probably find out your your back yeah. on. But it was great. I, I listen. I used it for the uh, the North Village pool over here, and I was showing people, and they're like, "This is great. I want. What, what, when can I get it? I want to use it." Yeah, it's a real big win for the community, um, no doubt. And so. Um, Okay, any more on the Gallagher topic? I guess, Dom, if you can find out what is the licensing cost for it, right? Because I know you said $5, but is that truly what the license is, or is it so this much? This is coming from the technician. Um, yeah, he said it's coming from the technician, and he said it's like 5 bucks if you're getting about 5000 of them. But he goes, don't quote me, but if you ask the Scott uh, to give you a, sort of a real quote, um then that's what that's when you get the right price but he says it's been averaging that he's seen people with about five bucks depending uh on about five thousand order so maybe seven bucks eight bucks maybe for a thousand uh, i yeah, thought we asked for that i thought we asked for Go 15 ahead. or twenty thousand licenses i'm sorry in the beginning yeah i think we did yeah, because okay. we looked at all the Kanoa residents and the apartments and stuff, and we, I think Lauren, didn't you? I think Lauren gave us that number, like fifteen or twenty thousand, with with all the Kanoa residents. And then I guess, okay. Lauren, if you can find out, but what cost is associated with our current card? Because is there opportunity baked in that some of that cost can be absorbed there versus having to push the digital component onto the homeowners above what is currently there?
Were you, sorry, I couldn't hear the first part of that. There's a cost to get a card in celebration. Yeah. And I'm curious what that cost is associated with currently. And is there any wiggle room as far as absorbing some of the cost of this new license rather than pushing it onto the homeowner moving forward entirely? So, so. The, the cards are for homeowners. The first two are free. It's $10 for the every one afterwards. For renters, it's $10 for, for any card. Um, I can't remember what the licensing cost was for the digital um, card, but I think I think it was like I want to say it was ten dollars or five dollars. I can't remember off the top of my head from Gallagher. Um, but on average, other associations charge twenty dollars for a digital um, card reader access. So, and if you're reassigning licenses, then I mean, you could potentially eat the cost and just sell it at cost to begin with and then at the $10 and then every time it's sold afterwards is a is a gain. I think we would have a lot of questions why a physical card you get two free and it costs 10 bucks versus a digital card, which is purely bits and bytes would cost more. But that's just my opinion. Agreed. It's they're just um, I mean, it's just something that you'll have to make a policy decision on. Sure. Um, uh, Dom, or do you have any availability for lunch next week? Because we could go ahead and put that in the team's chat and try to figure out a date time for lunch next week. Because we really love to, like Tom said, try to wrap this issue up before the end of the year. And, the, and I mean the calendar year, not the, the term year. Um, because we, as members of this team, we've been talking about Gallagher and the process now for over a year. So wow. You're, okay. you're, you're coming in on the tail end and you're, you're, you're feeling a little bit of the frustration of not moving faster. It's not your fault. No, no, that's fine. I did the same thing when I went to Silver. They were moving to a brand new PSS passenger reservation system and they spent like 18 months on it, spent who knows how much money I would, I can't say publicly. Um, and I told them it wasn't good within three months. They wasted yeah. their time. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, I have no hard feelings with it. Don't worry. I can handle it. Um, we will work on it. I will make time. Um, just okay. tell me when you guys are available. So why don't we take that in the chat? as a group and and throw out some some times for next week if possible i know we write up a button up against the holidays here but if we don't do it soon enough it's going to slip pretty far into december and then we're into another holiday season so um okay any committee comments none for me okay molly you good breck you good john well, Friday next week. Friday would work well for me too. So um, we can we can talk about that in the chat. All right. Um, motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you all for such a, a, a long meeting. Dom, congratulations on your first meeting. Welcome aboard. And Thank you. Uh, hopefully we'll be eating a meal together next week. Have a you great meeting, it. everybody. Hey, thanks. Thank you. Take care, everybody. Bye.